In this video, we're going to concentrate on DHCP options. Now, I've mentioned these or I've referred to them a couple of times in previous videos in the course. And I want to kind of focus on them this time. And I also want to mention that as I'm going through all these aspects of DHCP in the course here, scopes, reservations, options, and so forth, I will show you a little bit later on in the course the process of setting up a DHCP server and where you can see some of these things. So uh, we're, we're going to go out into the interface later on. It's going to be in a video entitled Authorizing the DHCP Server. So you can look for that one if you want to see how to actually go out there and set this guy up. Now, what are DHCP options? Well, it's optional information. It's information that we can choose on an option basis to be assigned to the client along with an IP address. And we're talking about things like the subnet mask that goes with that IP address, router addresses, default gateways, those sorts of things, DNS server addresses. These are things that the client needs. And while we're providing an IP address from a DHCP server, we can go ahead and transmit this information out there and fully configure that client not only for an IP address that makes it communicate or allows it to communicate on the network, it also gives it all these other services that it needs to find various network services out there on the network as well. DECP options can be defined at four distinct levels, and you need to be familiar with these on the exam. The first level is default global options, then scope options, Class options, haven't mentioned classes yet, I'll explain them in just a moment. And then reserved client options. Well, let's start off with the default global options. If I set options at the default global options level, then these options are going to be handed out, or whatever I make as options, be it subnet masks, DNS servers, and that sort of thing, those will be applied to all scopes and all classes on the DHCP server. This is a server wide configuration. Now, if I provide option information at the default global level, keep in mind I can apply different options at the scope, class, or reserved client option level, and they will override the global option. So the farther we go down the ladder, they can override the person or the option in, on the top or just above them. It's probably a better way to say that. Now, a scope option is going to be applied to any client that receives an address within that particular scope. And those can be overridden by class or reserved client options. Now these class options, keep in mind that we can tag our clients, if you will, with a class value or a class ID. And then we can, on our DHCP server side, set options up based on that particular class so we can kind of cross over between scopes and classes and make sure that certain people get certain options. So class is just another way to designate how different people get different settings. Now, a class option can be overridden by reserved client options. And then reserved client options is going to be applied to any client that has a reservation in the scope. And we talked about reservations in a video entitled DHCP Reservations. So if you haven't seen that video, you may want to go take a look at that if you're not familiar with DHCP Reservations. And once again, reserved client options can override all other options. So you have a little bit of a inheritance chain here that you can use and you can apply at the global level the options that you want everybody to get all the time and then in the various scopes, classes, and reserved clients, you can override those as needed. So you'll need to think this through and plan it just a little bit. But DHCP options are how we provide extra information to our clients outside of just the IP address.